Uh, let's talk to Baroness Ros Altman, uh, Crossbench Peer, former Pensions Minister, because, of course, this is a very serious subject, and this is the winter fuel benefit uh, which Keir Starmer has unilaterally decided he's going to do away with, um, and it's causing all sorts of rancour, not just in the Labour Party, um, but all over the country. Uh, Baroness, very good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. I heard you actually on Times Radio speaking yesterday, so I've got a pretty good understanding, I think, of, of what you're about to do. But you've got quite an interesting manoeuvre, I think, that you're going to try and attempt in the House of Lords, if that's not the wrong way to describe it. Can you tell us what it is that you're going to do? Well, what I am doing is praying against the regulations that the government laid over the summer um, I decided to do this um, virtually as soon as the announcement was made, but Parliament wasn't sitting. So I laid in the House of Lords um, what's called a prayer motion for a humble address, which will ask the House of Lords to vote on annulling the regulations. Right. So if peers vote this through, the regulations will be cancelled. The problem we have is that many uh, peers, of course, are frightened of challenging the government at this stage of its tenure. Right. Um, and this, this particular sort of parliamentary procedure is extremely rare. Um, I would have liked to amend the regulations so that it delayed the impact, for example, giving time to really protect the poor. Yeah, for another year, perhaps, right? Correct. But the way the government has done this, originally they had hoped to just not have any debate in Parliament at all. Yes. Because negative statutory instruments, which is what they've used here, just sail on through. The minister signs them into law and off they go. But there is this opportunity to cancel them. The, the choice is either you cancel it or you vote to accept it. You can't just say, I don't like it and I'd like it amended. Yes. So if it's cancelled, then the government would have to think again and would have to uh, come up with a much fairer and safer and less irresponsible way of taking winter fuel payments away from mm. the very um, higher income pensioners. I am totally in agreement with the idea that the winter fuel payments going to high income ta um, pensioners tax free makes absolutely no sense. But it's been in that position since 1997. Yeah. And they can't, it, it, it's just so irresponsible for the government to come along at a stroke without warning and say, because we want to take it away from the higher income pensioners, we're just going to take it away from virtually everybody, yes. even though we know that there are one to three million of the poorest pensioners who will be impacted and as you say um, in 2017 when this was a possibility proposed by mm. Theresa May Labour itself said this could cause death yes. to thousands of pensioners so what they've done unfortunately when they've laid these regulations is they have not done a proper impact assessment. It's like a knee-jerk, sudden policy. And their rationale for not even assessing the impact of what they're about to do is that we don't think an impact assessment is necessary because it's not going to have any impact on right. anyone. Which well, is ludicrous, isn't it? Well, quite. Know, it's quite. But also, it's also, is it not also unsustainable for them to continue to bleat on about the fact that the reason they have to make this choice, which they don't want to make, is because of the economy and the black hole Absolutely. in the economy, while spending billions on other things? Well, it is impossible to genuinely try to assert that not spending this £1.3 billion pounds this year on winter fuel payments, which is the expected saving mm. that the Chancellor announced, yeah. 
will crash the economy or bankrupt the nation's finances. I mean, that's just a, a completely desperate type of argument right. to defend the indefensible. And the other thing that is being uh, said, which is also not correct, is that, well, of course, the government is protecting the poorest pensioners. Yeah. It absolutely is not. The no. poorest pensioners are those who are eligible for the pension credit and don't claim it. On government figures, that's over 800,000 households. Yeah. And those who have very little income but just miss out on the threshold so they don't get pension mm. credit and can't get it. And they also, therefore, won't have the extra benefits that pension credit gives you, like housing cost benefits and council tax benefits, and also now the winter fuel payment. So those will be the very poorest pensioners. There's no mitigation for them. There's no consideration of the fact that pensioners are the group that need to keep warmest over winter, spend most time at home with the heating on, and are most at risk. Yeah. It is just so upsetting because I can't believe that ministers truly think this is a, a socially just measure. Right. But they're going ahead to kind of macho reasons, oh, we're tough. That's the trouble, because the only people, it seems to me, who are in favour of this are Labour politicians, members of the Cabinet. I mean, plenty of Labour politicians and Labour MPs are against it. Do you think that Keir Starmer has been surprised by the opposition to this? Because it's almost as though they kind of made a calculation and got it wrong. Because I don't believe Keir Starmer's a cruel man. I don't believe that, no, you know, the, no, the no, government no. is a cruel government. But I think they've underestimated this. They've taken advice wrongly and probably slightly naively from some civil servants who've been around yes. a long time. You know, that's what I think. Well, I, I think so too. Um, you know, I don't believe that Keir Starmer, Rachel Reeves or Liz Kendall, the three top people who would be responsible for this decision, actually would want to cause this harm to the very poorest pensioners. But if they were wrongly advised, which they must have been, and if... Uh, by being told you don't need an impact assessment because all the pensioners can manage without this two or three hundred pounds, then now knowing that that advice was clearly wrong, surely any responsible politician would mm. just hold up their hands and say, look, we got this one wrong. Yeah, We've course. got to give ourselves time to work out a fair way that is safer and will we'll protect the poorest, which is what we want to do while still you know, taking it away from uh, the, the wealthiest. Now, yeah. you could even talk about axing it, uh, taxing it rather than axing mm. it. But again, none of these mitigation measures to save costs or to protect more pensioners can possibly be introduced in time for this November. And and that's the problem. It's It's not taking away winter fuel payments from higher income pensioners who don't need them that is the problem it's the rush to do it mm. which has such terribly serious risks to the very poorest pensioners who have no one else to look after them yeah and who have no chance of uh, getting extra help in time for this winter and the idea that having a pension increase of six or eight quid a week from next April somehow makes up for the fact that they didn't get the money they needed to heat their homes over this winter, it just doesn't hold water either. Because no. many of them either won't be alive by next April or won't get the full amount and will already have not been able to heat their homes because they haven't had the money now. You know, Rachel Reeves kept saying with the difficult decisions she said she was making, if we can't afford it, we can't pay yeah, it. Exactly. That's all gone out the window. Listen, we've got to run. Baroness, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Crossbench Peer, former Pensions Minister Baroness Ros Altman will be following this with some interest and good luck with it as well because I think it's time uh, that this was reversed. It's absolutely ludicrous.